So Joe Biden is desperately trying to make up for answering a question in the debate about race in the worst possible way. And so he went around and now he's telling this story about when he was a lifeguard as a young guy and he had a run in with a bad dude named Corn Pop. And I think what he's trying to do here is he's trying to make the case that like, who me, bro? Listen, all right, I understand the concerns of black people. Now, let me tell you this story from when I was younger where there's a happy ending to the story, bro. Because me and Corn Pop ended up getting along and we ended up seeing eye to eye. And we became friends when there was a moment when it looked like we were going to be enemies, bro. That seems to me to be like the motivation behind telling this story. But as you're about to see, man, this is just so awkward and so unnecessary. This was the diving board area. And I was one of the guards. And there were a lot of, there was a three meter board. And you fell off sideways, you landed on the damp, uh, the darn cement over there. And Corn Pop was a bad dude. And he ran a bunch of bad boys. And I did, yeah, he, and back in those days, to show how things have changed, one of the things you had to use, if you used pomade in your hair, you had to wear a bathing cap. And so he was up on the board, wouldn't listen to me. I said, hey, Esther, you, off the board, or I'll come up and drag you off. Well, he came off. And he said, I'll meet you outside. My car, this was mostly, these were all public housing behind it. My car, there was a gate out here. I parked my car outside the gate. And I, he said, I'll be waiting for you. He was waiting for three guys in straight racers. Not a joke. There was a guy named Bill Wright, Mouse, the only white guy, and he did all the pools. He was the mechanic. And I said, what am I going to do? He said, come down here in the basement where mechanics, where, where, where all the pool f f filter is. You know the chain, there used to be a chain that went across the deep end. And he cut off a six foot length of chain, he folded up, he said, you walk out with that chain. And you walk to the car and say, you may cut me, man, but I'm gonna wrap this chain around your head. I said, you kidding me? He said, no, if you don't, don't come back. And he was right. So I walked out with the chain. And I walked up to my car. And they had, they, in those days, you used to remember the straight race, you'd bang them on the curb, get them rusty, put them in a rain barrel, get them rusty. And I looked at them, but I was smart then. I said, first of all, I said, when I tell you to get off the board, you get off the board, and I'll kick you out again, but I shouldn't have called you, Esther Williams. I apologize for that. I apologize, but I didn't know that apology was going to work. He said, you apologize to me? I said, I apologize for that, not for throwing you out. But I apologize for what I said. He said, okay, close the straight razor and my heart began to beat again. Dude, I don't know what you're doing, but you need to stop. How did anybody in his uh, staff think like, oh, no, this is this is fine. Go Let him tell the story about Corn Pop. This will go over well. Oh, my God, this is so embarrassing. There was also, I think it was the Washington Post had an article about this where they tell the story as well. Like, this is a concerted effort on their part. Like, I'll get the, get the corn pop story out there. This is going to be good. And so it's supposed to end happy and him and corn pop get along and... Okay, stop and reflect on this. We have a race right now where Joe Biden is out there telling, you know, stories about corn pop <laughs> and telling a story about record players, play the record players at night, make sure the kids hear words. This is what Joe Biden is doing. And Bernie Sanders is quite literally talking people down from committing suicide over medical debt at his town halls. You could not get a more stark contrast than you're getting right now. And then what's so funny is that in the fallout to this, uh, and I've witnessed it on Twitter too, it's amazing. You have, you know, Joe Biden's staff now is almost like, they're like kind of angry at the media because there are even people in the media who are normally not anti-Biden. Even they're kind of like, what's the point of this? Like, what are you doing? This is kind of weird and embarrassing. This is so strange. But they're like, his staff is like indignant that people are reacting in the way that they're reacting. So they're trying to like fact check people who are expressing skepticism over the story or have a negative view of the story. And it's like, dude... 
it, this, the question here is not the accuracy of the story. I don't give a fuck if it's accurate or not. The issue here is how massively out of touch that you think this is something that should be told on the campaign trail and should be a centerpiece of, you know, or should be a news cycle. Like, why do you think the corn pop story is something that's going to resonate with people and is necessary to tell? Why is this a thing? I, why are we here even hearing the goddamn corn pop story? This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. And so, you know, people were responding to some of my tweets about this. And they were like, ha! Huh, probably should have done some fact-checking before you tweeted, Kalinsky. And they had this, like, this old article that where there's, a, there's the obituary of a guy who had the nickname Corn Pop, who died, who's from the same area. As if, like, that's a gotcha, as if it's like, aha! See? So the story's real. That's not, I'm not saying it's not real. That was never, the, that was never the reaction that I was having. The reaction I was having was like, holy shit, this is incredibly awkward and wildly unnecessary and like, this isn't helping and why are you even telling this story? That was the reaction. The reaction wasn't like, oh, I'm sure he's factually wrong about this. I don't give a shit if it's true or false. It's just really weird that he's telling the story and acting like this is something that people need to hear as he's running for president of the United States. So that's what makes it extra funny is that like his staff is like, no, Oh, fact check. See, Corn Pop's real. Here's the obituary. So you know the story's real. So everybody who has a negative reaction to it, just please, everybody shut the fuck up. Please, please. And it's like, no, dude. The reaction is everybody going, this is really awkward. Not, hey, we think you're wrong about this. Oh my god, what the fuck? Joe, this is embarrassing. Listen, guys, and I have to say it because it's true. This is what happens when you run for president and you don't believe in anything. And you don't have an, a vision to sell people. This is what you do. You reminisce about the time when you were a lifeguard and then you and Corn Pop almost got into a fight and then you ended up getting along. And isn't that such an uplifting story? And doesn't this mean that somehow I'll be great on race relations? What the fuck? Oh my goodness, Joe. Holy moly. What are we looking at here? I'm sorry. He cannot be the nominee. <sighs> Joe Biden... You know, I made a prediction before, um, before we even knew who the Democratic nominee was. I did a segment, and I warned everybody. I said, listen, if it's Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump is the favorite in the general election. Now, at the time, people thought that was crazy. People were like, what? <laughs> Donald Trump is going to win the presidency? Are you out of your mind? That was the reaction from a lot of people. But I was right. Because you could see the dynamics unfolding. You could see that Trump was going to be a fake populist. Trump was going to act like he's anti-corruption. Trump was going to act like he's going to break up the establishment. And you could see that Hillary Clinton was very comfortable just running on a continuation of Obama's legacy, which is quite literally planting a flag and saying, I'm the status quo. So you could see the dynamic and you could see it was more in Trump's favor. Well, with Joe Biden, listen, man, he is without question likely to lose to Trump because Trump for all of his flaws he's got vehement vehement fans he's got some Trump stands out there who are you know next level dedicated to him now Trump also has a failing brain there's no doubt about that but he already has that giant base of support Joe Biden's support is all what I, again what I call default support People who don't really pay attention to politics, they hear, oh, Joe Biden's running. Oh, Joe, okay, he's a, you know, VP at one point. Yeah, I know Joe. Sure, Joe. Why not? Joe, Joe. And he's experienced to go up against Trump. That's okay. Sure, Joe. These aren't Joe Biden stands. These aren't ride or die loyal people. He's not a movement candidate. And then mix both their failing brains together and the fact that Trump does have the diehard support and Biden doesn't have any message at all. What do you think's going to happen, bro? Don't let Biden be the nominee. I'm telling you, you're playing a dangerous, reckless game if you do that. It needs to be Bernie Sanders because that's the only way we guarantee victory.